Well, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And uh, remember our friend here from a early video. Well, we're going to be doing some touch-ups with this chappy. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'm looking for my sanding sticks over there down to the area. There's one. Found it. <laughs> right. Fine. There's one. And we're just going to go over here with it. We're not taking too much off because we've already done this once and I've sealed, well not sealed, but I've put some of the glue um, down the seams so hopefully it will look a bit better when we get round to painting. Now there's some areas that don't seem to want to play. The seams here on this outside leg are a little bit iffy. Um, if I sand too much off I'm going on with the detail which I probably have already but never mind we're going to try our best and do what we can to make this a little bit more interesting to look at. So what do we have to do the job? Well we have some plastic putty and we have some of these little things. Now these are quite nice little efforts. They've got like a, a silicon tip and you can push um, what you call it's around. Um, sorry about the I want the mess. I'm going to do some spraying. Um, yeah, so they've got these silicon tips, and uh, they're quite soft, and they can push putty and stuff around. So we're going to use that. Theme. So let's bring back your man here, and we're going to add a little bit of this putty right round the seam here. Okay, and now with one of these little blueberries, we can push it around and try and blend it in with what's already there, so it fills any oops, it fills any holes and any gaps. And if we have too much like we have here, we can still spread it around, keeping it out of any dints and whatnot, any nooks and crannies that are in the mini, in this case model. And we can just push it about, push it about, wipe it off where we don't want it. And then add it where we do want it. Right, so I can do that for the entire model. Um, oh, I just realised I didn't tell you what this video is going to be. It's the, the video basically is just a case of showing you. Um, various things that I'm doing, finishing off um, aspects of previous models before we continue on to other things. So this is how I'm going to be um, sorting out both of the dinosaur minis. Now I'm not going to show you on both, I'm just going to show you a little bit here and there 
just so you can see how things are going. Um, and you might notice I'm actually using a pointed one, and that's because it's a, got a bit more of a well, it's got well, it is a point really, so I can actually get into areas and be a bit more precise with what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to wipe it off with my finger. Wipe that down. And that's the back leg sorted out. The seam there. Now one seam we really do need to sort out is the one at the back of the... Um, the ridged thing he has here i'm not quite sure what it's properly called okay so we'll do that and we'll come in with our little pointy sticky thing it's a silk modeling brush i think it's called a uh, modeling brush yes so that's what these are called. Um, I said they're ideal for pushing pieces or bits of putty and filler around. As you can see, I haven't put any on this side, but this brush, this modelling brush, is as I say. Pushing it about quite nicely, and I'm going from one thing to another. You could use one of the cotton wool buds, for this, just dampen it a little. But I thought I would give these a go today, as I've not used them before, so. You know, I'm showing you how you know, I'm showing you how I'm doing it and I'm making it up as I go along because I don't know exactly well I've never, as I say I've never used these so I'm just doing it in order to learn how to use them myself so uh, that's where we stand on these modeling brushes <laughs> That is just what we want. I'm going to fill in any gaps, anything where we think is should be solid. That's where we're going to put the this modern putty. <clears throat> and I'm going to carry on doing this until all the gaps are filled. So as I as I say, um, I'm not going to show you on both of these dinosaur models because once you've seen this on one, you've seen it all. And really, one you once you've seen one area again, you've seen how I cover it in all of them. So this is the last area I'm going to show you, and then we're going to move on to something slightly different. So a little holder, and I've got some of the stuff on the modeling brush so I'll try and get it into this hole and fill the fill the hole like so there we are got this bit on the back leg that needs doing and let's in fact, I know I said that was the last I was going to show you, but let's see what we can do with this bit because it is quite unsightly for sort of like the main part of the model. Let's see if we can tidy it up a touch. Oh yeah, 
Come on, cap, get on. Right. There we go. Now I'm just moving from side, from the left side to the right side, and trying to smooth it out as I go. I don't want to have it too much on one side than the other because it's going to look really, really odd. So I'm going to wipe it off the front horn because we don't want it there. And I don't suppose with it being white on a very pale grey it's doing any justice on the camera but you never know and again i'm wiping it and smoothing it down with my finger after i've gone around with the brush area and i'll just come over here while i've got some of the put it on the brush itself let's see if we can fill in this gap in the horn there. There we go. Now, um, I'm going to leave it there for this because, as I say, um, I don't want to focus too much on this because it's going to be a long pouring procedure. I just wanted to show you how. I want to get a go around doing it. So, there we are. Next thing I want to do, however, and I'm going to have to pause the camera for a moment. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to move these modelling brushes out of the way. They're handy. I'm going to put them in my drawer. We're coming back to this young lady that we painted a while ago. Now she has been um what we call, what's the word i'm looking for she has been varnished so all we need to do now is just finish off and the only bit we need to finish off is this crystal in her um whatchamacallit in her uh, staff so i think what we'll do first off because it's not looking too brilliant, I'm going to get a little tub here and pop a little, just a little bit of white paint in it and just go over the crystal once more. Just to brighten it up a little. Because we need a bright solid white colour for what we're going to do here. Because we're going to make this crystal really stand out and pop rather nicely. Right, I think that is it. So now we've done that, I'm going to explain what we're going to do. In a workshop a while ago, I don't know whether they still do them or not. Um, released some uh, technical paints, and this is one of them. It is Waystone Green. Now these give a really shiny look to gems. Um, I have painted armor um, parts with some of these, I think. In other videos and you know going back to it now it doesn't look really right so um i'm going to stick with you I may, I may paint over those i'm not sure yet but i may just do it in a matte spray i don't know but this is what we're going to use for the gem and it's going to make it really really pop so first off i need to find out where it's going to be easy for me to paint that's it so I'm going to give this a bit of a shake and I've got one of those little um, 
paint shakers, and I bought it for my birthday. So there we are. <laughs> it's not a very expensive one, but it does the job, I think. Now we're going to open the paints, and you can see from there there's a nice luster to this. I'm just going to add it onto the gem just like so. And it's not a very strong paint. So what I'm doing is trying to get it so that the majority of the colour is at the bottom of the gem and that will give um, some form of depth of colour and shade to it because at the moment there isn't a way of doing it so that you can make it look uh, brighter at the top or brighter than the right. There's no way of actually uh, tinting it in that way. So we can't do the normal paint effect with this. What we can do is make sure that as we're painting we pull the brush down to where we want the majority of the paint because the paint will always be the darkest where you lift the brush. So if it means coming back once it's dry to just add a little bit more to the bottom, that's what we'll do. But that's it. So what I want to show you, that's what I'm going to be doing with these. And I quite like the look of that, st um, that uh, stone now. So I'm going to class those as finished. And then we can move on to the next character when we get round to painting some more and these if you, if you don't remember or this minute is from the original game of Nova Atus um, the Kickstarter hopefully we'll, we will be getting sometime next year for the new version of it um, but yes that's going to be another set of unboxing videos and in future another set of painting videos but what we need to do now is decide which one of these videos uh, which one of the models are going to get the um, painting treatment in the next video so first off I'm going to show you some and see what you think so first off we have this fella who is the squire let's zoom out a little bit now we have that pot of paint so we have the squire and that's what he looks like there we are uh, who else do we have um, No, I think I've painted her. And I'm trying to work out who's who in these. So we have the novice, which is him. And I think I think I was right, I think it's him. Judging by the judging by the headwear, I think it's him. So there we are. That's another one. Um, then we have one of the. Um, expansion ones, who is the hunter, I 
have a, I'm carrying a shotgun, and also like a sniper rifle with a blade on the end of it. There we are. And then we have the Cabalist. There's that one. I'm showing you these first of all, and then I'm going to give you under, uh, give you the options for painting. And then we have the Scourge. He's a Plague Doctor. Be appropriate for last year. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking to make sure. Well, I think some of these, if I remember correctly, were double sided. I think I've taken on the base. Um, you know, on the lowest. Um, ranking minis out so i don't think we've got any of the higher level ones and then we have the traveler who looks like that mm. there we go and we have my personal favorite the Templar, big beefy chappy, you ready for action? On the Templar, but it doesn't have the red cross anywhere on the picture, which signifies a Templar, but never mind. <clears throat> and then we have, oh dear lord. We have a necromancer, and this is she. There we go. And pop this on there, and then we have a lancer, and this is she. And finally, we have a blacksmith, which is your man here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to organise these in a way to make it easier to for you to vote. <clears throat> so I'm just going to get these cards to one side. And there we are, that is what we have. So, let us look. Um, I haven't thought of this too. So if you want the squire, which is this fella, vote A. If you want the Cabalist, who is this fella, it's B. If you want um, the if you want the novice, this fella, that is C. If you want the scourge, who is that fella? Then he is D. Um, oops. Trevor, blacksmith. If you want the Lancer, which is herself, it's E. If you want the blacksmith, which is him, it's F. If you want the Templar, which is him, that is G. The Necromancer is H. The Hunter 
is I and the traveller is J so they are your options I'll take a photograph of this and um, post on a message or you can and you can go on to that and do it or you can um, what, what's the word I'm looking for you can just leave your vote at the bottom of this video in the comment section um, so there are your options A to J uh, let us know which one you would like to see painted and I'm going to give you a week from today and then the one who gets the most votes after the end of the week I will paint that one okay so that's it for this video I hope you've enjoyed it as I say it's only a quick one I just wanted to show you how I'm doing things um, let's have a look at herself again let's move the camera down a little there she is and as you can see from that nice sheen that is on the gem it's sparkly it's bright and it looks as though it's not um it looks as though it's standing out against what would be natural it looks, it looks like it's uh, infused with some form of magic um now i do have a little issue because there is a hurt or something sticking to the side of her face let me just try and get the blooming thing oh yeah i got it it might have been a little bit of static grass but yeah there we are that is that so that's it for this video as i said i hope you've enjoyed it um here are the voting oops here are the voting options once more i'll move up a little there we are a to j let me know who you would like painted in the next video well the next video for this series anyway so all i need to do now is just to say stay safe and until next time as always take care god bless and bye for now